Hello, my name is Paul Hackett. I am a self-obsessed phone scoper, digiscoper. Um, I work for Cower as an ambassador and I've been doing this hobby. I just hit my quarter of a century this year, 25 years doing it. Yes, I know I'm not old enough, but yes, I am. God bless. Uh, well, so quickly, without further ado, we'll go to the first slide. So basically, we're gonna try and go through a couple of these things now and I'll move this phone so it's things out of the way. Why phones, which phones, smartphone lenses, which scopes, types of adapters, tips and tricks, social media sharing, which apps, accessories and examples. Okay, let's go. So, all of us, we all carry a phone. Is anybody in the room that hasn't got a phone? Put your hand up. That's a first, that's a first, that's good. It's obviously a very easy way to actually uh, take a picture. And now with the modern, uh, modern smartphones as we call them, I started off with an old Nokia. If you look back there now to that technology in the phone and to now, it's chalk and cheese. No need to carry additional heavy telephoto lenses or apps. Powerful telephoto performance without the bulk, so it's all in the scope. Capture behaviour, record it on video, super slow motion, the true wow factor. And easily share your experiences with friends and family. Okay? So, in general, all modern smartphones have a built-in camera. That's what they do. Some models have better quality than others, but in general, they've all got that basic uh, function. Obviously, with the iPhones, that's one of the big ones, but the Samsung series, Sony, Huawei, they're all up there and all offer different, uh, slightly different things to run with. So many of the modern smartphones, they offer multiple camera lenses. And I just want to talk about this quickly. So in the beginning was the original smartphone with one lens, and that was typically a wide angle lens. When you attach that to the phone eyepiece, to the scope eyepiece, that's the eyepiece, phone, adapter, what happened was you would get this word called vignetting, the black corners. So we were trying to do something that wasn't meant to be, and with it comes limitations, okay? So that was one phone, one lens, wide angle. Moved to like three years ago, and now you have what we call multiple lenses. So typically now you'll have a super wide angle, a wide angle which is original, and then you'll probably have another one, two times or three times. The beauty of that second lens, I'm talking about third lens, two times or three times, it's not digital lens, it's pure optical lens. It's actually two times optics or three times. And that's been a game changer. Why? With some of the new, newer scopes now, in the last decade, they have got a wide angle zoom eyepiece. So this is the biggest thing to remember about today. If you're thinking about getting a phone, about getting a scope. When you put the phone to the scope with an adapter, with a two times, gone are the days where you would put that with one lens and all the vignetting, and you would have to crank up and use the muscle power of the zoom to get rid of that black bit. Because people go, oh yeah, I just touch the screen and I do that. Never ever, if I see you, I'll slap your wrists if I ever see you doing that. Because all you're doing is, you're stretching the picture and it may look good on the phone, when you get on the computer, you've stretched the pixels, you've stretched the picture, you've stretched the quality. So by using, always use, if you've got a zoom lens, use the muscle power, pure optic zoom, okay? So what happens now is, going back to what I just briefly said, there's a vignetting, so that was the signal, the, the circle. So now, when you can now use this with some of the new lenses, and I know in the room that everybody will not have, uh, a phone with uh, uh, a couple of the couple of the lenses on, but you get no vignetting. This is the, this is a sentence you need to remember. There's no vignetting when you have a two or three times lens on your phone with a wide angle zoom eyepiece from the beginning of the zoom to the end of the zoom. So you can use it for, even for video. Okay, from the top. Now, what's the advantages? Quickly, the, the advantages are is if you had just a normal um, phone with one lens you can still use it please don't i'm not decrying it all i'm saying is if people in the room are looking to invest or spend put your money in a, in a in a phone that's got more than one lens and the beauty is is that you can 
have clear pictures and not have this on your screen. So I'm, I'm, I'm labouring it, but I'm labouring it for a reason. So go back to the one phone with one lens. You've got to now get rid of that, and the only way to get rid of that is you can either go to the screen and do that. No, I will slap your wrist if I see you, okay? Or you can use the muscle of the zoom, but you'll still get this in the corner. It'll, it'll be down here, so the zoom will expand the picture and you'll get more of the actual picture, okay? Simple things, but they have a major, major impact on what you're doing. Thanks, Rob. Zoom eyepieces are good. They increase the zoom of the eyepiece to eliminate the vignetting. Fixed wide angle eyepieces can, can eliminate vignetting. Right, what does that mean? We've got a bit of a plug. We've got a 40 times, probably the wide ang widest angle fixed eyepiece in the world for the car range that we shoot on, the 78 and the 88 and 99. So it's a fixed 40 times. Sea watchers love it. It's got a really, really big thing. But what it also gives you is, if you've got a one times lens and no other, you, if you've got the Kawa scopes, and you get this eyepiece, you have no vignetting. Because it's got super, super eye relief on it, it's got a wide field of view, the people that just have the one lens, they're loving it. Also, it means that you can get closer to birds. I live in Aberdeen, so I did a 10 hour journey through the night, through the night to come down to see you dear people. I'm 15 minutes from a seabird colony, and I've been going there to, to work every night, and I've got this 40 eyepiece lens on one times, on my, on my phone and it's full frontal and then obviously it's close so I've got the feather detail and I can shoot I can shoot video with it as well we'll move on a little bit more the bigger the objective lens the more light it gathers so again quick uh, physics on the thing smaller lens less light still get results but the bigger it is high quality scopes will produce best results and limit the chromatic aberration or the color blur or the color fringing um, Kawa are the only people at this show to actually have a scope which has pure fluorides in the objective lens. So this reduces the colour fringing, which is the blue or the maroon or round the subject of the bird. A steady tripod and header essential. Let's go. Okay, so you've got various ways to look at um, attaching it. And the amount of people, I call these the cheap birders, where they literally do this, right? <laughs> how many have you done that? Tell me how many have done the circle of shame, yeah? How many have you done that, yeah? Did you get the picture or did the bird fly off? Kind of says it all, really, doesn't it? So, take your chance if you want to be a cheap cheapster and you want to. And some people can do it. So quickly, I'll give you a quick tip. The ones who don't want to spend the money, I don't know why I'm saying this, but the way to do it: grab the hand, put it over the eyepiece, and then raise it up above it, so that the phone, when you do it, will rest on it like that. In the picture on the screen find that little bit of light, that circle of light, and then go towards it, yeah, keep it steady, tap touch it, and then allow your hand to do it, but now you've got to take the picture, so use your nose. <laughs> or, or get an adapter. Or get an adapter. <laughs> Have I laboured that enough? <laughs> Okie dokie. So, dedicated ones a bit, you can get universal ones, or you can get customised ones. This is probably, the most compact one I've seen, and the beauty of it is, it's metal. It's not plastic, so it doesn't go off. Have anybody actually purchased other brands of adapters and have you found that the, the plastic moves? It actually, you, you line it up and it moves, right. Okay, never mind about that, I'm gonna move on. So in other words, if you can, you, the key point is, phone, adapter, eyepiece, scope, head, tripod. Them are your essentials to get you going. So, I, adapters need an eyepiece ring to connect it to it. So, we at Kawa, that for thing. We, are, we offer solutions for the Kawa, but we also um, offer solutions for other brands. So if you come to see us and you've got a other brand, 
um, bring your phone, come and see us, and we'll sort you out. So basically, we have made the ring for other manufacturers, the major manufacturers, okay? So that ring is the diameter of your eyepiece. So it just literally goes in there like that. Simple. Okay. This is my pet hay. People tell me, oh, I didn't have long to stay with a bird. How many pictures did you take? One picture, yeah, yeah. What I do is, <clears throat> I take lots of pictures and delete the stuff later. If you paid money, petrol money, hours, flights to another country, and you can't actually spend five or 10, 15 minutes basically trying to get your eye in, because it's all about the focusing and the sharpness of the focusing. We'll get onto that in a minute. So use the zoom of the eyepiece to eliminate the vein netting if, if you can. But also if you've got the camera, camera lenses that are two or three times better. Learn of the features of your camera app. Now then, we need to talk quickly about the downfall of having multiple lenses with some of the phones. What kind of happens is, if you don't have an app, a dedicated app, a third party app, sometimes the iPhone has a little bit of a meltdown. So you put it on two times on the Apple iPhone camera app, the native one, and for about 10 seconds, the picture's there, then it all goes black. And all I can think it is, is that three lenses are trying to go through one. And the, and the, camera, the camera sensor says, not having that, and shuts down. Okay, so I found out you can use portrait mode on iPhone. And it does kind of tend to last a little bit longer. But the way around it for me is, there's two apps. So if you're writing, phone scope, an app on the internet for iPhone and Android, phone scope with S phone S K O P E and that will have a dedicated um, icons to check to actually choose the right lenses and it stays on okay um, the other one is uh, my flavor of the, of the year at the moment is moments and you can shoot raw in that as well so you can actually get a kind of rough kind of raw the, the, definitely the file size is bigger than JPEG for sure okay you know much about that <clears throat> lock the focus on the phone this is the bit that and this is probably if you've never done it this is the bit you need to listen to to get this and we had revelations I did a workshop I'm doing a workshop at 1pm in the owl workshop later if people want to come and bring their phones and have a play uh, you've got an invite and there was 42 people in there and I actually got around 42 people and every four, of those 42 people everybody actually got to take a picture yeah, I did, honestly, and the girl said, nobody else has done this all day, I said, it's a workshop. You don't need a lecture, you've got to work, you've got to work at it. Right, this is how I take a picture. Find the subject with the, with the scope, not with the phone. Once you've found it, have it on minimum zoom. Once you've got the, the subject in the middle, lock the pan and lock the tilt. So I'm stopping it from going that way and that way, okay? So that when I put the adapter on, it's not going off the bird. How many people have done this one? Well, you know what's coming, don't you? You forgot to do that, you put that on, and now you won't use a scope, you use the back of this to try and find it. Where's that bird gone? You're looking at the screen. Don't waste your battery, come back off again, find it, lock it and do it. Get a routine going. That's probably the best way to, to deal with it, really. Um, and then once you've got that on, you focus the bird as best you can. You now, what you do now is, hang on, my phone's having a meltdown. Right, so what you have is, you have the screen, what you do is, all get your phones out, this will be the revelation. Switch them on, onto camera, point them at that screen. I'll move out of the way a little bit. How are we for time? Four minutes, oh, this is going to be quick. Right, right. If you put your finger on the, on, the, on the screen and hold it down in camera mode, point it there. How many people have got the iPhones and they can now see for the first time a lock, a yellow square, and it's flashing? Right? Hold it down. On the right hand side of the iPhones is a, is a slide. It's like a symbol of the sunshine. If you move it down, 
the picture can go dark. If you take it up, the picture goes light. Probably on the Android as well. How many people didn't know that? Yeah, 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 yeah. happens. So that's the biggest tip for you today. Okay, the other thing is, if you've got, uh, um, I think it's in camera on settings in iPhone, you can put a grid. What, I, what really annoys me here, Chase, you've seen pictures of phone scope pictures, and then the duck is swimming up the lake. You can get the grid and you can line it up so you get the level of the water. Okay, let's move. Focus as accurate as you can with the scope. Continuously check and focus and refocus if necessary. Another big tip, I have a nervous tip. So every two or three pictures, I come off, I refocus, I put back on again, and I go again. Adjust the exposure manually to avoid losing detail. I've just shown you that with your, your, your camera app. You can do that with the, with the third party apps. Try to minimise the shaking of the, of the setup when taking a shot. This can result in motion blue to the, to the uh, high level of max. In other words, if you have been a camera person, DSLR, this can shoot anything from like 9,000 millimetre to 3,500 millimetre. If you actually put one of our extenders on and put that in the frame, you're talking 4,500 millimetre, 42 to 99. We for Devilman, when we first brought this out, we put two of them together and stacked them. It's somewhere like 132 mag. Mad. So, okay. Learn the, so, perfect, you can share it out. You can shoot in portrait. That's the big thing happening now. The thing in shooting landscape or portrait. You can obviously put it online and everything. The other things I want to quickly talk about is, I use one of these called the Hudman Loop. So, when I've got the screen and I've got the screen locked, I put this close to it and I can really get the focus really, really sharp, which is that. If you're going to buy a battery backup, buy one with at least two or three charges, not one. I also use a dongle as well. I use a dongle, a Bluetooth dongle, so that I don't touch the screen. You know, my friend Jeff from America, our colleague, he's Florida bound, that's brilliant. But in, in uh, sunny Aberdeen in winter, me touching the screen will actually cause blur. You can use the uh, timer three seconds but if you buy a bluetooth dongle just pair it up to your phone good to go okay third party camera apps i've explained that one these are some of the pictures this is literally this year this is bullens of bucking 15 minutes from my house in aberdeen it just shows you what it's capable of doing ptarmigan i love this i love the i love the midges at the top i got bit that day you suffer for your art don't you no, Bitten, down in Essex. Again, all this is possible. If you have a, a scope and a phone, this is all possible. That's those down at the uh, Bullens of Buchan, yeah. Just to give you an idea of size, that's where I live. I've got a seabird colony, one minute to go, thank you. And this is again showing us how we're actually doing it. All shot on an iPhone. So you can see, anything is possible. Please do not be disheartened. Oh, I've got an old phone, I've got an old scope. Ptarmigan calling, we can't have got sound on. That was brilliant, that was. So be prepared to try things, okay? That's the thing, there's the bitten again. These are all iPhone phone scope. I love that sinking, don't you? <laughs> you can see me now, I better go a bit lower. Oh, I'll go a bit lower. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you want to, Rob, my marketing guy here, absolutely brilliant. Give this guy a round of applause. He's done so much for me. He's done all the stuff. Um, the Tower YouTube channel, it'll be all on there for you to peruse. So, I think that's the last one. Right, I don't know if we can take questions. We can't, can we? I've got to go. Right, I've got to leave you now. I'm so sorry. I told you. At least you didn't get the board now. Thank you for listening to my name, Dribble. Over at the Tower stand. Come and see us. We'll sort you out. Thank you very much.